Hello everyone. Welcome to this next episode of Kelly's Quest. Tonight's episode was filmed in Natick at a venue called Roots and Wings. It was a storytelling event that I was asked to be a part of. I hope that you all enjoyed the program, so sit back and relax. Like she said, my name is Kelly Jenkins, and when she reached out to me, when Cheryl reached out to me and said, you know, I want you to come talk, and I want you to talk about pilgrimage. The timing of it was perfect for me. Working in the middle school that I do, which is a wonderful school system, you walk into it and there's a giant rainbow flag mm -hmm. right there in the foyer of the public middle school that I work in. And I know I'm perfectly safe there because I am a transgender woman. The pilgrimage that I'm talking about that is going on in our school right now, we study world religions, which blows my mind just in general that I get to work in a place where we get to study other religions besides Southern Baptist Evangelical. Because <laughs> I'm from Tennessee, and I'm an expert on what it means to be Southern Baptist Evangelical, and I'm running away from it every day for the rest of my life. Not because I think that there's something wrong with being spiritual, not because I think there's something wrong with loving God, but because that faith in particular disjointed me from the world, disconnected me from the world, said that I don't belong with this world. And when something like that happens, you start losing yourself. So I go to Wellesley Middle School, and we're studying about, right now, Hajj, mm -hmm. which is a Muslim festival. It's a pilgrimage every year that they take to Mecca. Three to four million Muslims every year go there with one purpose to go to a sacred place and worship. I ran away from that. I was kicked out of that. I couldn't go home and worship. I had to find other ways to worship, and that's where my story begins. My story begins in the year 2014, and my pilgrimage started in East Tennessee. As a transgender woman, I had no idea that the rest of the world could accept me. All I knew in Tennessee was that if you're a transgender human being, you best either look exactly like everybody else, so you're safe, or you just disappear and you hide and you move to other places. East Tennessee is beautiful. I don't know if you've ever been there. The mountains are wonderful. I lived in the Tennessee Valley. I had mountains on either side of me, the Appalachian Mountains on one side, the Cumberland Plateau on the other side of me. I could see snow at the top of the mountains and still be warm in the valley. If I wanted to see birds, if I wanted to see waterfalls, away I went. And it was my spiritual place. It was my home. The problem was, my home didn't want me. But I fought to stay there, and I fought to stay there. And the only way I could figure out to stay at home was to do sports. And I sported the heck out of it. I don't know if that's the right verb or not, but I did. I sported it hard. And I got good at this sport called frisbee golf disc golf. So today you are going to get an education on terminology of what it means to play disc golf, what it means to be transgender, and what it means to go on a pilgrimage. Disc golf is a very simple sport where, this is a miniature version of it by the way, the actual version is much taller. It is an 18 hole layout disc golf course, just like regular golf where you stand up there and you go and you hit a golf ball and then you go search for it in the grass and you find it and you go and you hit it again and you go chase for it and finally it falls in a hole in the ground and you walk to the next key and you do it all over again. Same concept with frisbee golf except instead of hitting a golf ball, you throw a frisbee. And you throw them and you throw them and you go find them. And these are easier to find than golf balls. Because this is the actual size of them. So these are what are called the miniature versions of it. Now, this is called a disc. This disc has a special stamp on it that up until 2014, I would have never have ever let anybody see. This stamp right here is the transgender pride stamp. It lets the world know that I am okay with who I am, and I don't care if you know it or not that I'm transgender. And this sport saved my life. In 2014, I was living what's called stealth in Tennessee. Stealth means that if somebody had come up to me and said, are you a transgender woman? I would have said, no, I'm not. I'm just a regular old woman. 
my best friends in Tennessee did not know that I was a transgender woman because I was so ashamed of who I was because of my Southern Baptist evangelical upbringing. So this basket right here represents the start of the pilgrimage because right here on it, it says, Bowling Green, the amateur championships of Bowling Green, first place women advanced. Mm -hmm. Most of the women, whenever they sign up for a tournament, they just put their name in a little hat or on a computer, and away they go and they pay their money and they play. Well, I did that. I filled out the form online, I paid my money, and I thought, yes, I've been accepted into my first disc golf tournament ever as my authentic self. Imagine that. I got to go compete against women <coughs> as my true self. I didn't have to go out there and be somebody else for the first time in my life. That was exciting for me. It was also terrifying. I had put it off for a long time because something like that meant that I was risking things. So I signed up for it, and I didn't even think about telling them that I was transgender because I was so used to being stealth and not letting people know. Well, some of the people that were friends of mine down in Tennessee thought that maybe this governing body for the Disc Golf Association should know that I was competing against the women. I'm sitting at my house probably practicing and loading up, getting ready to go for this tournament, and I get a phone call. It's from the governing body of the Professional Disc Golf Association. They say, is this Kelly Jenkins? And I'm like, it is. They go, Miss Jenkins, we have a question that we'd like to discuss with you, and it's kind of sensitive. Do you mind if we can possibly do this? I say, okay, let's go ahead. I knew at that point, as soon as they said that, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about my genitals. Here we go. <laughs> because that's what the fear was. These people had told the Professional Disc Golf Association's governing body that I was a man playing in the women's division. And now I had to prove to the PDGA that I was a woman. So the questions began. Are you transgender? Yes, I am. So we have a list of rules. Would you mind going and looking at that list of rules to make sure that you qualify to play in the women's division? So I have to go search online by myself and read the rules. Have I had surgery? Have I been living as my authentic self for two years? Have I been on hormones for two years? Do I have medical proof? Do I have the paperwork to prove that I've had the surgery, that I'm on hormones and that everything is going fine, that all my documents have been switched? answer was yes to every single one of those questions. I just divulged to you all something very private about myself that I had to divulge to someone on a phone just so that I could go throw this little stinking frisbee <laughs> into a little bitty basket for no money. But this sport was everything to me because in my life there was this disconnect between my brain and my body. They didn't like each other. <laughs> they didn't like each other at all. As a matter of fact, sometimes my brain would intentionally disarm me and make me mess up in life with my body. <coughs> it would make me take on bad behaviors. It would make me, it was not a good time in my life. But I could get out on this stupid little sport right here, on this course, go walk through the woods, throw a frisbee, walk to it, pick it up, throw a frisbee. And I loved it because what was happening my brain was saying, Kelly, take that frisbee. Do you see that tree that is 180 feet away? You need to go to the left of it, make your disc turn to the right, skip, and go up into a basket. I'm like, okay, hey, body, let's do it. So my brain would line it up, and I would throw, and away it would go, and it worked. And I had connection. That was the one time that my brain and my body loved each other on a disc golf course. They were allies with one another, and I was in heaven. So I was willing to go through that risk. I was willing to take that <coughs> chance of saying, yes, I meet all of your requirements, and I want to go play in this tournament. This was in May of 2014. 2014 changed my life forever. Because a month after going to play in this tournament, which, by the way, I won. It wasn't because I could throw farther than the women. It wasn't anything like that. What it was is I could throw a frisbee from here to that basket and make it. 
They could all throw way farther than I could, but there was something about me being able to finish the game and make this little shot right here, the hardest part of the game, and I ended up winning this tournament. I had no problems, none. I was there, I met the requirements. They were absolutely wonderful, the PBGA. The person that actually called me that night, his best friend was transgender. I didn't know it at the time when that had happened. So I had an ally in this sport that said, you know, I'm gonna treat you with respect when I talk to you, because I get it. This was all new to me. It was new to me to go out into a place and be my authentic self because it was terrifying in the South to be your real self. There were lots of times when I would make sure that I would stay inside my house and not go out. I just was like, this doesn't feel like a safe day. Don't go out. And I wouldn't. This tournament here was just the first of the things. There is a camp in New Hampshire called Camp Aranuti. It is a camp for transgender youth and gender variant youth, ages eight to 15 years old. Little bitty kids like me, except I didn't get to be that little bitty kid growing up because my parents would have never have taken me to a camp that would have allowed me to be a, my authentic self. They took me to the conversion therapy camps is where I went to as a kid. So that's my experience of camp life. So I, my whole life as an adult, have worked with children. I'm an educator by trade. I want kids to grow up. I want them to think for themselves. And then when I get 90 years old, I want them to know how to take care of me because I'm going to need it. So I'm teaching them now to do it. These kids, I go up to this camp in, Mass in New Hampshire. I've worked with every kind of kid imaginable, autistic kids, kids that were non-communicating, like could not even speak. I've worked with kids that want to do nothing but harm themselves constantly. I've worked with kids that have every behavioral problem imaginable. I've worked with kids that are 10 times smarter than me. I've worked with kids that are very poor. I've worked with kids of every race, religion, creed. I have never worked with a kid like myself. So I went to New Hampshire and I volunteered at this camp and I took this with me. I took disc golf with me to New Hampshire. I didn't know if these kids would want to play this sport or not. I didn't know if these kids even cared about disc golf. But I pulled up into this camp and the first thing I see, me, as a little bitty child. And I knew right then and there that my life had changed forever and that I would go through walls, I would go through fire, I would go through everything to help those kids. And that's what this, everything I do now, Standing here in front of you has the purpose of somehow or another helping a kid in the future not have to stand right here and go through this. So I go up there and the most powerful thing happened. I was in the majority. <laughs> That's life changing. <laughs> that is something else that I had not even expected. What I expected was to see parents loving their children. I knew that was going to be a shock for me because I lost my family growing up. I lost my family when I became my authentic self. But I was seeing parents loving their children and saying, go be you. I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused, but you're the engineer of your train, and I'm hanging on as the caboose, and I love you. And these kids were warriors, absolute warriors. They stand up to their principals and say, no, I am going to go to the restroom I need to go to. No, you will call me by my name that I deserve to be called by. And that's kids that are 12, 13 years old. I had moved up here from Tennessee where just at the beginning of it, I was stealth. I was hiding myself from the world and here was a 12 year old kid being proud of themselves and their school. It shamed me a little bit. I'm like, I'm not doing things right. I have to be the one that fights for them. It's not right that they're fighting for themselves. So really and truly, I, that camp was on end of the 5th of July, 2014. I'd been there for a week. I didn't know anybody at the camp except for a couple of counselors that we were with, you know, working with these kids. And I drive home to Tennessee. And I think, as I drive back to Tennessee, and I start seeing across the West Virginia state line on 81, and I see the gigantic 100-foot tall cross with the giant spires hanging out. And I'm thinking, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> My pilgrimage is the other direction. 
So I get back to Tennessee. I put a post on Facebook. It's a wonderful thing sometimes. It can also be evil. But in this case, it saved my life. I put a post on Facebook with their camp group. Like the counselors had her own little group page. And I said, listen, I've seen the light. I've got to get out of Tennessee. I've got to come up there. Can you all help me? I said, where's well, a good school system to teach in? Where can I find a job? What's housing look like up there? And someone that I knew for a week said, Kelly, come live with us. I packed up my car, my four-door Honda Civic with everything I could possibly <laughs> shove in it, my two dogs, my cat, anything else, and away I went to Massachusetts. That was one month later. August 4th, 2014, I left Tennessee in my Honda Civic, moved up here with no job, with knowing no one except for one person, and leaving it all to the faith of the universe. Because this is what my pilgrimage is teaching me. Say yes to the universe. Anytime an opportunity comes, Cheryl emails me, you want to talk? Yes. You want to do this? Yes. And I just keep saying yes over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And every time I say yes, it leads to something. This fort right here, I came to Massachusetts and I started playing as my authentic self as a woman every single tournament. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. I lost this past weekend against this woman. She played really well and I could not make a putt. Just like the reason that I won earlier was because I could hit a putt. She hit him this time, but it didn't matter. She knows that I'm transgender. We play against each other and nobody cares. All of these people up here know me from my authentic self. And that's the most liberating thing I can ever... It takes my heart away to think that there's somebody in this world that can just say, I don't care that you're transgender. Can you throw a frisbee with me this weekend? That's what I want to know. Or can you teach me how to do 2 plus 2? Can you teach me? I don't understand algebra. I don't understand what we're doing in social studies. That's the things that I care about. This board provided me that opportunity. I took it up there to the camp with me. And I go out one day, and there's this woman throwing my discs farther than I can throw my discs. I had never seen this person, and I'm up here at this camp, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm competitive. Let's have a little competition here to see who can throw a frisbee farther. She's one of my best friends now, all because we both throw frisbees together. When I moved up here, people were terrified. They were like, Kelly, you don't know anybody. You don't know a soul up there. How are you going to make friends? I'm like, I'm not worried. I've got a disc golf. <laughs> and I went on a disc golf course, and I just started playing. And I met people. And people started saying, okay, come play with this more. And I'm like, okay, I will. And the next thing you know, I'm now part of a team up here in Massachusetts. I go around with people that know that I'm a transgender woman, and all they care about is, I'm going to go throw a frisbee with us in the middle of winter when there's eight feet of snow on the ground and it's miserable. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. I don't know why. <laughs> Actually, I do know why. Because if I sat around my house all the time, all of the thoughts of my past would creep into my brain. So I'm still on my pilgrimage. I'm still moving along. I am at my home now here in Massachusetts. So that's the start of my pilgrimage, leaving Tennessee in 2014. Flash forward to 2019, I am now at this place in my life to where I can actually start thinking about truly pushing it forward for other people. Mm -hmm. I can start doing things for other people instead of just surviving myself. Mm -hmm. I can now go thrive and pass it on to people. And that's where I'm at with my story right now in life. I go to my school and I teach every day as a transgender woman. I don't say I'm a transgender woman every day, but I promise you every person there knows that I am because I don't dare ever not be my authentic self. Mm -hmm. Because it could be so easy to slip back into that, well, it's safer because I can just walk down the road and nobody would ever know I was transgender possibly, but then I lose my whole story that I just told you. I like my story. I like where I'm at in life. I'm at this place in my life right now where because with Patrick and myself and my TV show, 
which, who has their own TV show? Three years, but two years before I moved up here, I wouldn't tell a soul that I was transgender. Now, 2016 comes along, and I get a question. Kelly, you've got a great story. Why don't you come share it at the TV station? And I did a dumb thing. I said no to the universe. But the universe had other plans, because the person that asked me, asked me again. No. Asked me again. No. Then he said, well, hey, guess what? I just hired this man named Patrick Snow. Look at this movie he's developed and created and tell me no. I looked at the movie, I watched it, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I said yes to it. That was well over 30 episodes of my TV show later. We are now that many episodes in. It's an award-winning show. I've interviewed state senators. I've interviewed parents of trans people. I've interviewed police officers that are sitting there in their full uniform, gun on their side, bulletproof vest on, talking about transgender issues. I fought for my civil rights in this state. This past October, November, sorry, this state got to go in, the people of it, push a button or make a check mark, and I hope everybody flipped the little ballot over and saw the yes on three on the back side of the ballot mm -hmm. question and decide whether or not I'm a human being in this state. And you all said, yeah, you're a human being. Mm -hmm. Stay here, Kelly Jenkins. This is home. <laughs> this is 100% where I belong. This is 100% my home. But here's the thing. The quest continues. I have this skill of playing disc golf. I can take it on the world. Here's the crazy thing. There are courses all over this country. Right now in San Francisco, the best disc golfers in the world are playing against each other for real money. Like, for me, real money, because I'm a teacher, but for real money, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about equivalent. So these people are playing this passionate sport of theirs. They're chasing their dream of playing Frisbee. They're going to Frisbee through the woods and getting paid money to do it. And I thought, you know, I want to do that. But I also didn't want to give up being an advocate because I'm torn. I want this sport, but I don't want another child to go through what I went through growing up. I want a child to feel the love of their family. I want their family to support them and not have to worry about what's going to happen to them if they love their child. So, starting pretty soon this summer, when the school year ends, I'm taking my TV show on the road. Because you see, if I go to San Francisco and play the tournament that's happening right now, in the state of California, I have full protections. So I could go to California and I'm going to take the TV show and I'm going to interview somebody in the state of California that knows what it means to be transgender in this state on a political level. And I'm going to interview them. We're going to create an episode of the show. We're going to podcast. We're going to blog. We're going to try to do all these different things. We're going to do as much of it as we can because it's a lot. And then the next tournament is in Arizona. I go to Arizona, I have no protections. So for each one of these states I go to, there is going to be a separate set of laws that impact me. When I go to North Carolina, I can't even use a women's restroom legally. When I go to my home state of Tennessee, they just pass an indecent exposure law that says, you know, if a man goes into the women's restroom and pee pees, that's a felony. Well, they use that against me. I don't know. But we're going to go chronicle what it means to be transgender in every one of these states. And we're going to put it together in this picture so that the rest of the world can see that a transgender person doesn't have the same rights as you all over this country. Mm -hmm. In Massachusetts, I'm your equal. In North Carolina, I am far below your equal. In California, I'm your equal. In Arizona, I have no protection, but at least they don't have laws against me. And we're going to paint this broad picture of what it means to be transgender across the U.S. And we're going to put it together, and we're going to call it, we're going to, it's called Kelly's Quest, The Transnational Journey. And what's going to happen is, we're going to compile this into all 50 states eventually. And we're going to let people know that we need the Equality Act, or we need some sort of law that gives federal protections to everybody, because everybody doesn't have federal protections. Thank goodness there are state rights. Thank goodness there's Massachusetts. Massachusetts is my home. Massachusetts is where I will 
hopefully live the rest of my life after I complete this. Massachusetts is where my two dogs like being. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go simply because of that. But I want you to know that you all are the reason that I'm here. This state, the people that live here, the people that created this, the people that said, you know, we are going to be the cutting edge of this nation. We are going to be the ones that bring life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness and all that stuff. We're going to live it. And you all have said to me, come on, I'll let you teach my sixth grade students about being transgender. Why not? And I'm going to ask you all, when you see me put the backpack on, and you see me just sling it over my shoulder, and I'm walking down a disc golf course, and you see me pull out, my favorite disc ever, a Firebird. <coughs> and you see me playing this sport. I want you to know that it's because you all have given me the confidence to do it. You all in Massachusetts have made me feel safe. It's this state, it's this ability to be my authentic self that has given me the courage to go out and try to do this very, very, very important thing and make life better for other children. So I hope you all will consider donating to this. We're going to create an email list. And if you all find it something that you think would be worthwhile, we have a GoFundMe page. I will send you the information if it's something that you would like to be a part of. We will certainly enjoy it. If you have questions that you want us to cover, please ask us, because we want this to be as authentic and coming from people. We want the questions to come from you, not from me. So I thank you all for taking the time to listen to this. And please, please, please go out and make sure you throw a Frisbee somewhere because it's worth it. <laughs>